Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to the Criterion Collection review series where we go through every movie in my personal Criterion Collection uh, and just give my thoughts and opinions on them. And today we're going to be looking at one of the quintessential Italian neorealist films, which uh, ironically came out near the end of the movement, uh, but we're looking at the 1948 film Bicycle Thieves, which is number 374 in the collection. Uh, and this film is one that I actually saw uh, a few years ago in my History of the Motion Picture class, which is where I first saw Rashomon, Wild Strawberries, a lot of these classic films. It might have been the first time I had really engaged with an Italian film. I had seen Eight and a Half, but it was still a little bit above me at that um, when I first saw it. Um, and I remember being very impacted by Bicycle Thieves. It was a film I went into thinking, oh, this will just be like an older film that, you know, I'll understand the influence, but it's not necessarily going to have an emotional impact on me. Um, but I was really struck by it, and a lot of the images and the and, and the themes and the ideas of the movie have really stuck with me. And so I was very excited to rewatch it, and well, I'm happy to say it's a film that really does hold up and does stand the test of time, even though it is over 50 years old, you know, yet it still has a lot of emotional power. Uh, but the film uh, follows a father uh, down his luck. Uh, he's trying to support his family, so his wife and child and their, and their newborn baby, uh, by trying to find a job. And after spending weeks and possibly even months trying to find a job at the unemployment offices, uh, he finally receives one where he has to put up posters around the city, but he needs a bike for the job. And unfortunately, he had to pawn off his bike. But lying about having the bike, he returns home and tells his wife and she decides to pawn off their sheets and do everything they can to make sure that he gets this bicycle so they can then get a monthly salary and you know be better off and have a brighter future uh, but unfortunately on his first day on the job uh, the man's bike is stolen uh, and then the next day he, he brings his son with him to go and try to find the bike and scour the entire city for the thief or for the bike itself. Being an Italian neorealist film, which for those who are unaware, um, the Italian neorealist movement uh, was inspired by a backlash towards Nazism, towards World War II, towards fascism. Uh, of course, um, um, Italy was one of the Axis powers uh, and had to deal with a lot of propaganda, a lot of um, fascism and just horrible things happening there. Uh, and so once the city was sort of freed uh, from, 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 from their fascist rule, uh, a lot of directors and filmmakers decided to, you know, reject fantasy, uh, reject control and fascism, and try to portray the real lives of Italian people. And so a large focus was on using real actors, shooting on location, um, very little film equipment, you know, just capturing reality as it was. Um, and Bicycle Thieves is one that is sort of, um, challenged a lot more as a neorealist film. Um, there aren't as many uh, natural um, actors in there, so normal people. Uh, there are definitely a lot of trained professional actors, uh, and they do use like lighting and like a rain machine and things like that to sort of to sort of stretch their truth of the situation. Um, but I think what Bicycle Thieves does extremely well is in the the actors and their performances and in the way these people are realized to be so realistic. Um, where the main actor is so, I don't know if plain is the right word, but he feels very down to earth. You know, he feels like a guy down his luck who is so desperate, he's willing to do anything, you know? Like he, he he's scouring the entire city to find this one bicycle. There's a sequence where he has to chase down this priest to find the location of the guy that maybe stole his bike uh, and he's harassing him inside of a church and you know even though the church staff is trying to kick him out and everyone's noticing him he is so desperate for this bike. You can feel the desperation in the way he says things and his movements and his face and everything. It's just it, it, it's, it's simply powerful and I think there's this like inherent grittiness to the film, this inherent groundedness. Um, I think a lot about the locations, which are almost like, you know, you go you go into, into the city of Rome and you have these beautiful locations and these large buildings, but there's such a large amount of people and life and activity, right? Like it's clear they didn't like have a permit to film on the road or anything like that. You know, like things are just happening and they're filming it to a certain extent. Um, 
and that lends itself to a lot of the large you know crowd shots where you have thousands of extras pouring into the streets uh, where it gives it sort of ties into the final shot of the movie, uh, where the actor, uh, where, 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 where the where the dad and his son sort of um, camouflage into the crowd. They sort of morph into it as they're walking, which gives off this feeling of you know this guy isn't alone. This isn't a unique story. This just happens to be the one we followed. You know we could have followed the story of anyone at the beginning of the film that goes to the unemployment house to find a job and. It would be as equally engaging and interesting and full of hardship and drama because this is what the average person in Italy in 1948 or 47 is experiencing. Um, and I think just capturing that inherent empathetic human quality is what makes Bicycle Thieves such an engaging film and such a long lasting film um, that to the point where it still works today and is still hurtful at points, you know, it's, 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 it's universal in a sense you know people are still struggling to pay their bills and giving up everything and sacrificing everything and then they're left with this moral dilemma when i think about bicycle thieves i think a lot about how grounded the locations feel uh where again they're full of people but they just really stick out to me i think about the uh the the, the sort of the market they go to where they're selling bike parts i think about the church i mentioned earlier i think about the soccer stadium that all the people that like flood out of at the end of the film where there are literally you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bikes and the dad has this incredible you know moral uh, dilemma this, this, this incredible crisis where he has to decide if he's willing to steal a bike if this is worth it to him if he can get away with it not only for his own moral sake but for his son which is where a lot of the main drama comes and is revealed near the end of the film is it's not only the morality of you know do i get my bike back in that drama but it's the morality of raising a child in all of this of being challenged every single day to do the wrong thing and having to try and do the right thing every time especially when trying to raise your son properly um because of course the there's a famous dinner scene where the where the father and son are are um, eating dinner at this this sort of shabby restaurant uh, and they keep looking over and they notice that a group of clearly rich affluent people um are sort of having the time of their lives going through multiple bottles of wine a large dinner uh and the father has to sort of gives the son a lesson about class and about society and how unfair things can be um, which adds so much more weight to the final sequence where uh, spoilers but the, the the father tries to steal a bike and gloriously fails you know when a bike was stolen from him no one came to his aid but now that he's stealing a bike it just the universe works against him he's pulled off the bike and almost had the police called on him uh, but once the, uh, the 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 bike owner notices the son and notices the situation he sort of calls it off in a weird sense of solidarity I guess Again, it's just a very fascinating and very um, engaging film that is just so incredible. And it's so well shot and acted. The kid is great. The main guy is great. Um, there's so many great memorable moments and sequences. It's, it's difficult to say too much about it and to fully go into Bicycle Thieves because it's one you just kind of need to see. It is such a simple straightforward movie but it's so good at what it does these non-actors are so good at being actors these filmmakers are so great at capturing the grittiness of of rome just the situations again they're simple but you it's easy to empathize with it's easy to feel their pain and again the power of cinema is empathy it's it's the ability to put you in the same situation as this one person. Again, I think the film does a great job of conveying the idea that, you know, this isn't a unique story. This isn't, you know, this guy isn't special. So many people go through this type of thing every day. I think about the sequence when they go to pawn off uh, the sheets. The father looks in the back and he sees the seller putting the sheets up on the racks and the rack is just like, shelves and shelves and shelves are just going so high and every single set of sheets 
is sort of, it's another person's dream dying, right? Like it's another person having to sell off everything just to live, just to survive. It's, it's simply incredible. It is just a visually striking film, a, a morally strong film, and, and, and one that is sort of important to film history, uh, and important if you are a cinephile and really want to engage with something you haven't seen before, or you can see its influence in so many modern films. So this being a very classic and highly regarded film, the Criterion release of Bicycle Thieves comes with a lot of great special features. Uh, so first of all, uh, we have a collection of interviews from people that worked with the director, uh, Victorio De Sia, uh, which are very interesting, very insightful. Um, and then we had this really great little like vignette or program called Life As It Is, um, which is a film scholar, uh, Mark Schiel, S-H-I-E-L, Schiel, um, sort of describing the Italian neorealist movement and Bicycle Thieves' place within it. Um, and then we also have a documentary uh, on the screenwriter, um, Cesar Zavattini, hope I said that right. Um, and then we also get a really great booklet, uh, which begins with an essay uh, from Godfrey um, Cheshire, uh, which is another essay looking at the neorealist movement, Bicycle Thieves' is placed within it, and its long-lasting legacy. And one thing I like about it is it compares um, sort of the influence of Citizen Kane and the influence of Bicycle Thieves, and how both sort of um, inspired different directors for different reasons, and then would sort of converge almost into the French New Wave movement, which I thought was a great connection. Uh, but then you also get a collection of interviews uh, which were all published in a, in a book uh, reflecting on Bicycle Thieves. The book came out in the 90s. Uh, it's, a lot, it's the director, it's a lot of the actors. Uh, it's just a lot of fascinating takes on Bicycle Thieves. You know, I think, I think the book came out in the 90s, so about 50, 40 years later, looking back on the film and its influence and how it's affected people. Um, again, this is just an incredible resource, you know, like any great Criterion Blu-ray, if you're a fan of the film or want to learn more about it, this is the place to go. Um, and, you know, if you haven't seen Bicycle Thieves, you really should. It's it's one of the, the classic quintessential world cinema films and really does stand the test of time uh, because it is so simple, because it is so human. Um, and does a great job at capturing that humanity all with, with its warts and all, you know, it's it's simply a, an incredible film uh, But either way, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please like it If you want more people to see it, please share it uh, And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe where next time we're going to be looking at the very peculiar and fascinating Mishima a life in four chapters uh, which is actually uh, a film from Paul Schrader who came out with First Reformed recently and a film he made in the 80s is one of his first films he ever directed. Uh, but either way, thank you all so much for watching and hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.